We will start by seeing how a decision tree makes a prediction and then we will build a decision tree by hand. Consider A and B that can equal to 1 or 0. The table shows us the possible multiplications. On the right we have a decision tree expressing this table. The top node of the decision tree asks for the value of A. If the value is 0, we visit the child node on the left. This is a leaf node, commonly denoted as a square. It gives us the decision of the tree. If A we are equal to 1, we would visit the child node on the right. This is an internal node, commonly denoted as a circle. It asks for the value of B and then sends us to the corresponding leaf node. Let's now explore a toy dataset and then build a decision tree for it. The following table shows us whether each of the five subjects got sunburned based on the type of sunscreen they used and how long were they exposed to the sun in minutes. Lotion is a nominal attribute. We can have a multi-way split where each outcome corresponds to the distinct value of the attribute. Or we can have a binary split by grouping different values. Exposure to sun in minutes is a continuous attribute. We can have a comparison test resulting in a binary split or we can have range queries resulting in a multi-way split. Let's now consider a top-down greedy approach to building a decision tree. At each step we try the possible ways of splitting the data and then choose the best split. For simplicity, we will only consider the multi-way split for the lotion and binary split for the exposure. Looking at the multi-way split based on lotion, the leaf on the left has two negative examples and one positive. When a node clusters data points that belong to more than one class, the node is said to be impure. Hence, the node on the left is impure. On the contrary, when a node clusters data points that belong to one class only, the node is said to be pure. The leaves in the middle and on the right are pure. The level of impurity of an arbitrary node T is commonly measured with Gini impurity, where C stands for the total number of classes and P of I conditioned on T stands for the fraction of samples that belong to class I at node T. Thus, the Gini impurity of the left leaf will be approximately 0.44. Rest of the leaves are pure and have a Gini impurity of 0. We can calculate the total impurity for this split by taking the weighted sum of the leaf node impurities. Impurity where 3 out of the 5 samples end up equals 0.44 and rest of the leaves have an impurity of zero. Thus, the total impurity would be approximately 0.27. We shall now try if we can get a lower impurity score if we start splitting based on the exposure instead. For simplicity, we will only consider the binary splits. We determine the comparison tests for the binary splits 
by sorting the distinct continuous attributes and calculating the average values of the adjacent pairs. If we split at 25, we will get a total impurity of approximately 0.47. If we split at 35, we get a total impurity of about 0.3. We got the least amount of total impurity with a multiway split for the lotion. As such, we will start our tree that way. Since we already went through the mess, let's finish rest of the tree intuitively. We have the most amount of total impurity at the left leaf. We should be able to guess that there is no point in separating the left node based on the lotion again. We are left with two possible binary splits based on exposure. Comparing the splits at 25 and 35 minutes, we see that split at 35 minutes gives us the least amount of impurity. Hence, we will choose that split. The tree we obtained is overfit to the training data. In practice, we may want to have a validation set and early stop the training once the performance is no longer improving on the validation set.